On Monday, AMD ended the embargo for a litany of new Zen 5 information. Some things immediately enjoyed a ton of discussion, but other things I believe are flying a tab below the radar for how big their performance implications are. But before I get to that thing that I believe more people, especially Intel, should be paying attention to, let's actually start with something that didn't fly below the radar and is justifiably blowing everybody's mind. Zen 5 CCDs are actually slightly smaller than Zen 4 CCDs, despite packing 28% more transistors. That is nothing short of incredible. I mean, think about that. AMD is actually bringing a generational performance uplift from Zen 4 to Zen 5 without even really using a new node. It's just an updated version of the same node Zen 4 used. And in addition to that, they didn't even make it bigger like they did when they went from Zen 2 to Zen 3. Technically, it's a little smaller, which means that it might even cost less to produce. Well, certainly it will cost less to produce Zen 5 this year than what Zen 4 cost back in the year it came out, 2022. But it might even cost slightly less to make it compared to Zen 4 just in general. And, you know, I continue to believe, therefore, that AMD's greatest asset against Intel's Arrow Lake is cost. Cost matters, people. And after all, if you want an example of how much cost can become a problem, this channel just broke the disappointing news that the 8 plus 32, so in total 40 core variant of Arrow Lake, that that has been canceled because it ran into some engineering issues. And then they looked at how much this thing would cost to even make. And they said, we can't afford to make this gigantic three nanometer 40 core die for consumers. There is no way we will ever be able to price this competitively against AMD's products. And in fact, I'm not even sure we'll be able to price this competitively against AMD's products. You know, even what's on screen here, the 8 plus 16 core variant of Arrow Lake that will be launching at the end of this year, that still looks way more expensive to produce than something that looks like this. And thus, that is why Intel really does need Arrow Lake to be a home run here because it's going to cost more to make, and so it better have the performance to justify that extra cost. And, you know, if you would have asked me a week ago, Tom, will Intel hit that level of performance that will allow them to charge more for Arrow Lake than AMD will charge for Zen 5? I would have said, actually, possibly. Remember, just last week in a video, I put out that people I am talking to at Intel are expecting Arrow Lake to possibly hit a level of performance that should make it outpace Zen 5 standard at the very least, at least based on what we've seen AMD unveil of Zen 5 so far. But notice that I said so far what AMD's revealed, and I'm saying Intel expecting. That's because after pouring through new information that AMD put out on Monday, I noticed a few things that I think could actually lead to Zen 5 performing double digits better than they've been letting on in some scenarios, and I'm going to explain to you how they might. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Vanta. Whether you're starting or scaling your company's security program, demonstrating top-notch security practices and establishing trust is more important than ever. And that is why you should check out the Vanta platform that was built to scale with your company at every stage of growth, whether it's early and you need to prioritize securing new deals and validating where you fit into the market, or you're growing rapidly and need to adapt security compliance with changing needs or even if you're in a late stage of growth that now needs to drive for maximum efficiency and reduce risk, Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, and so much more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Plus, you can also streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrate your security posture with a customer-facing trust center, which is all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Cora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time, and you can join them and get Vanta $1,000 off via the link below. And remember that just clicking on that link below helps the channel a ton, and signing up helps you even more by saving you $1,000. So support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out Vanta today. All right, so let's dig in to that Zen 5 technical data here. And the first thing I want to begin with is highlighting that Zen 5 actually does seem like a bigger efficiency uplift than what we saw with Zen 3 to Zen 4. Don't get me wrong, Zen 4 was in many scenarios more efficient than Zen 3, 
But, you know, I got to say, in a lot of other scenarios, it kind of just seemed like Zen 4 gave you a ton more performance while consuming a ton more power at the same time. But with Zen 5, it seems clear that it isn't just laptop that will bring large performance increases at the same power as last gen, but also on desktop, some chips seem poised to bring large performance increases per core, despite those cores consuming less energy than last gen. And it's not just that, they will also be running cooler too, as AMD has made a large improvement in the thermal resistance performance of Zen 5. And yet, that's still not all. In addition to that thermal resistance performance, again, meaning that at the same levels of power as a Zen 4 counterpart, Zen 5 will actually be running at a lower temperature, and so it's actually useful to make it run at that higher power level. There are numerous rumors emerging that show that if you give more power to Zen 5, it will actually reward you this generation with a decent amount more performance. And so that gets me to how I believe AMD is still kind of sandbagging the performance of Zen 5. It's PBO. Let me give you an example of what I mean. This slide here, I saw a lot of people making fun of this slide online because it seems to suggest that AMD's 9700X is only 12% faster than their last, last gen 5800X 3D in gaming. And while I definitely do think this slide is a bit stupid in how it chose to portray the 9700X, I don't think that we can disregard that this 9700X is limited in power consumption and not using PBO if you check the endnotes. In fact, if you check the endnotes, you can see that AMD is never using PBO for these products, despite it giving way larger returns in performance this time around. Seriously, look at what PBO got you before with Zen 2 and Zen 3. Basically nothing, especially in the case of Zen 3. No, the 9700X, on the other hand, if you were to turn on PBO and actually let it use the same power as its predecessor, by the way, the 7700X, it could perform up to 15% better in some apps. Now, look, I don't think that it will raise gaming performance by 15%. If you check the end notes, this was in Cinebench. But I do think that there's no doubt here that AMD is intentionally hiding direct comparisons to last gen with PBO enabled. They always compare themselves to Intel or to a Zen 3X 3D product, and they're never enabling PBO. This is a way that they are definitely sandbagging here, and they want it to be an unpleasant surprise, I believe, for Intel on release day that any reviewers that care to test with PBO enabled, which AMD will probably put in the review notes, hey, maybe try PBO, that they will find that it isn't 16% faster than the 4900K. Actually, in this app we found with PBO enabled, which is easy to do and cool, that the 9900X is 23% faster than the 4900K. Although, speaking of the 4900K, there is one caveat I do have to say here that I noticed in the endnotes for this information AMD put out. It does seem like AMD was using the baseline profile for their testing of the Intel products. Now, on the one hand, that doesn't change the comparison to the 5800X3D at all. But on the other hand, it really must be noted that while not all apps are gonna see a big difference in baseline versus non-baseline performance, that especially in like one where you have Cinebench, you probably wanna add another five to 10% to Intel score here, which is still lower than if you were to add 15% to the AMD score. So again, AMD is still sandbagging against Intel, but depending on what settings you use, not as much as one could suggest because AMD used baseline profiles for their benchmarks of Intel platforms. Now, to be fair though to AMD, I also wouldn't consider it an apples to apples comparison were they to not use baseline. That just doesn't really make sense to have a benchmark where you're like, yeah, the competition can use unlimited energy and we won't. That doesn't make sense. But again, that's just something to keep in mind here where you see the 9900X is 16% faster than the 4900K, and I'm suggesting it could be 23% faster. Yeah, but that's not if you turn on base, uh, turn off baseline. If you turn off baseline, then the Intel product's probably still going to be, you know, below 20% weaker. Uh, although, again, I don't think anyone should be using anything but baseline or actually lower with Intel right now, and I don't think anyone would want to double down that that's not fair that AMD did that, considering these products don't even seem to work unless you use something actually lower than baseline.
Oh, and actually I have another caveat here that I want to say before I get to wrapping up this video. And it's that, that this leak you're seeing here that everyone's circulating right now about Zen 5 boosting to really high levels of power consumption for a lot more performance. I am told that pretty much all of those scores look legit by people that I know who have Zen 5 processors. However, I am told that you shouldn't assume that your system will be able to hit that top number easily that you really would need some pretty incredible cooling to get there and it was kind of softly suggested to me that the 200 watt and 230 watt scores sound obtainable if you're very powerful but not impossible to have cooling in your pc like one you know a 14900ks requires but unless you have some crazy open loop cooler or use ln2 that very top score not everyone's sample and every pc is probably going to hit that easily but, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are typing this out right now in the comments. If AMD's new processors can boost even this much higher easily, why wouldn't AMD just have them do that at stock? Why not push their chips well beyond 65 or 170 watts like Intel does? Or I guess more accurately like Intel used to. I don't know how much longer Intel will be doing that. Well, I think there's a few reasons they actually would do the more tame stock settings this time around. Well, the first one, like I've already stated, I do think AMD wants this to be a surprise on review day that is viewed as a bonus, underline that word, a bonus for those that are okay with consuming higher power so it doesn't feel like it's a tax for everyone to take higher power that don't necessarily want it. Like I think you've seen in a lot of Intel Raptor Lake reviews where people just complain that Intel's pushed it too far. Now, now number two though, I think AMD doesn't care if they win by 10% or 15% over Intel. As long as they win by at least 10%, who cares? And Intel 14th gen is going to lose to Zen 5. Bad, hands down. So why not, you know, if you're AMD, think to yourself, why not focus more on efficiency? We're going to beat them by enough to take all performance crowns. Let's then also make it so that it looks crazy how much we also win the efficiency crown. You'll just be seen to be dominating everything, not dominating a couple things extra while you throw caution to the wind. Now, the third and final point I actually think is the most important one to consider that AMD noticed that a lot of the people who are buying the 7800X 3D, it's not just about the performance, it's about the efficiency. In fact, if you go and look at reviews of X3D products, you can see that like half of them are saying the main reason they bought the X3D version is that they knew it would be more efficient, that they wouldn't have to get a fancy cooling system, nor even actually an expensive motherboard, that these are modest requirements for X3D products. And so it just makes it so mindlessly easy to go, I know this will run in every motherboard. I know this won't kill itself with high voltages. And I know I can use the cheapest cooler lying around for it. I think AMD saw that reaction to Zen 4 X3D and went, you know, if we just make our lineup use a reasonable amount of power, I just think people are going to reward us more than if we push that at extra 5%. It just seems to be bearing out in the data. And speaking of X3D, think about this too. This hidden power that I've outlined in today's video that AMD's sandbagging for Zen 5, this is also going to extend to Zen 5 X3D products as well. As again, I'm told again today that they definitely boost higher than Zen 4 X3D products. And they're going to have full overclocking support like this channel exclusively leaked weeks ago. And so when you add this PBO sandbagging and then the X3D features that I said AMD was sandbagging that we all know about now and combine them. I really do not know how Arrow Lake's going to compete with AMD and gaming benchmarks based on what I'm hearing. And I just think we might need to consider that what we're about to see is AMD jump out and take the gaming crown and then extend that lead with Zen 5 X3D and then. Intel's still just going to have 8 plus 16 Air Lake products till 2026. We might be seeing AMD dominate gaming performance on desktop for multiple years in a row here. And, and now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, just what the heck is Intel going to do? In fact, how are they acting behind the scenes? What are they telling their partners? Well, I'll tell you what Intel's doing behind the scenes, and that's how I will close this video. What you're seeing on screen right here is marketing material from Intel meant to guide people at retailers like Micro Center or Best Buy on how they can sell their products as better than the competition. Right now, according to Intel, you should buy Meteor Lake because its graphics are better than the Qualcomm X, nope, 
not the ex-elite, they're telling representatives to compare Meteor Lake to a 7-watt budget APU. Completely aloof marketing like this, this here, at a minimum, doesn't tell me that Intel marketing gets how bad things are, but good lord, I do hope engineering does. And that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please comment down below about what you think Intel is going to do in response to this emerging Zen 5 information. And then also make sure that you like the video, that you share it. Sharing helps so much people. And that you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Subscribing helps a ton as well. Also consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. You'll get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon at the right tiers. All tiers get access to the Discord. They get access to the Die Shrink catalog of content. Content, and they can ask guest questions, which Wendell from Level 1 Techs, he will be the next guest on Broken Silicon. You can submit questions within 24 hours for him and then see them read live on air, or I guess just read on the podcast, not live. But anyways, I clearly need to stop here. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend, everybody.